four ten duo with a fault on channel two. Channel one works fine. Channel two, uh, go to um, charge. Uh, we put it on a ten amp uh, charge. Start connection check error. So um, it's connected okay. So it's a matter of looking inside and see. Uh, if anything is blown. Taking the uh, case apart slightly, I uh, move this back. You can see the bank of on each channel. Uh, this is one that doesn't work, but um, the connect to the positive. So just checking with a normal uh, meter, you can see that uh, it's connected to the positive and the other side of the on this one. Look good. They look uh, don't look distorted or um, no resistor or burning. Uh, check the meter. You can see on this side they're blown. Now they can be replaced. Um, you can solder uh, some new ones just on top. You don't have to unsolder them because you get the sol solder along these face and that face. But before after, I'll do that, but afterwards. Um, I need to check some of the other components too because these wouldn't normally blow just on their own. There must have been some overload or short circuit. So it's possible that some uh, one or more of the Powertron FETs has blown. So I'll check them as well. Right, take the uh, top panel off. You have to release this um, ribbon cable from here. Uh, there's a little black part on this side which uh, lifts up. Uh, you might have to use a little screwdriver to lift it up and when you put the ribbon cable back in when it's in position you have to push that black bit down it clamps it. It's a bit of a fiddle because the cable is very short. Anyway while it's up uh, the power frets come are soldered on this side of the board you see one two three four um, and the same on this side. Now it being symmetrical you can normally compare each side. For instance, uh, with the meter here, uh, there's a little power fret here, three legs. If I'm going to connect uh, onto here and then just check with the meter, that leg, you can see there's a tiny movement, it's got a capacitor. Uh, and then middle one, there's nothing. And the outside one, just over 100 ohms. And then you can do the same on the other side and compare. And if they if they're the same, you don't you know that you don't have to look at that transistor again. So um, we've got just over a hundred, and they're normally symmetrically mounted, but sometimes they might be the other way around. I haven't replaced these fuses yet, so I've just got to get a connection on it. Okay, so hundred middle not connected and the outside one there's a little movement it's a slightly higher than the other side which could be a worry anyway you you continue with the others look at that one it goes just over a hundred middle nothing and nothing on the other side and you can check it on this side same capacity same fit um about 70 You can check this power trans, this power fet here. It goes nothing, 70, just over 70, and 120. And you check, you can check the other one. It goes, um, if you can see the meter, um, 120, just over 70, and, and uh, nothing basically um, otherwise if you want to if you find one that's a bit different you can check each side if it's a bit off um, you need to take it take the heatsink off with these screws and have a look at the device see if it's burnt out there are a couple of diodes sometimes worth checking here as, as well so just connect check left and right if you think if you see any burning on the backs of the board, you know you're going to have to take it off and look at the other side. Anyway, um, I'm going to put the fuses in. We'll see how we get on. The fuses are 15 amps each. There's four of them, making 60 amps. Uh, you can get them. They're called uh, 
Kriplo SMD 15 amp. Um, now I've held them in place just with some blue tack on one side, so align them up, and then you can solder across this side, then take the blue tack off and do the other side. So let's just do that with um, with a nice hot iron and some solder just there. Okay, plenty of solder on uh, both sides, mate. So it's uh, really soldered across. Make sure you soldered it right down and bridged all the fuses right down uh, from the top to the bottom on both sides. Uh, this side needs quite a, a hot iron because the heat goes into this as well. I right, put it back together again. I couldn't find any other faults uh, with the main power fets, which is great. Uh, so I just repaired the fuse, screwed it back together. But I am going to test it on a current limited power supply, uh, 2 amps max, just in case uh, anything else is going to go. This is the channel that wasn't working, so we we'll turn it on first. Uh, it comes up, and then it's just a matter of um, plugging it in. And um, because it's only 2 amps, what I'll do, I'll have to adjust this to um, initially... Uh, a one amp so I've set it to uh, one amp normal balance on this channel so we just go to oops just go to um, start okay no error message um, currents begin to increase One amp, we hope. Power supply is uh, can manage one amp. <laughs> Let's have a look at the um, status. Not, not very good milliohms, but it's reading the milliohms. Uh, it's meeting the difference between the two cells, so it's obviously um, balancing the balance signal there. Um, so it's looking good. Right, quick check it. 12 amps, now running off a more powerful power supply. Um, Amped up to 12 amps. Let's check the discharge works. It's managing about 17 amps. Normally I advise uh, discharging into uh, a resistor bank rather than the heat has to be dissipated inside this otherwise. Fans have come on uh, just cooling down the heat sink uh, which was used for discharging, I've stopped it now. Um, so that's all working good. And I've just pulled the knob off, I'm going to clean the case might as well with just something like this. It cleans it up nice without taking any lettering or anything off. Put the uh, bottom back on and um, be finished. Clean the case. It's come up like like new. Got rid of all the fingerprints and everything. Um, looks great. Working great.